I started with Sequentum at the end of 2017 when we took on investment from WorldQuant Ventures. Um, the first conference I went to was actually Battlefin, um, and I met so many people that were eager to incorporate data into their investment decisions, and nobody really knew how to do it. Um, there were so many questions, um, not just from a compliance point of view, but from a general, you know, sort of how do you actually incorporate this and get value out of it? Um, and so the industry has come a long way in a very short time. Um, and we've actually uh, been thought leaders on the compliance front. We worked with, we brought the Sequentum operating guidelines, you know, because we have a whole platform. Um, uh, we brought our guidelines to the Alt Data Council, uh, the Financial Information Standards Division of SIA, which is a standards making body. Mm -hmm. And we worked over 18 months to publish uh, web data collection considerations, um, which, you know, their considerations, we're not in the business of giving legal advice, but um, they'll help firms, data buyers, data vendors um, decide how they want to operate the risks they want to take, how they want to mitigate their risks, and, and how to govern. Um, and of course, our platform, we have you know, built in all of the controls and monitoring and auditing and governance um, capabilities to stay on top of uh, you know, what's happening with your data operation. Um, it, you know, so thing, things are getting a lot more uh, mature and organized and, and um, uh, you know, with the latest SEC rulings, uh, right, the App Annie, um, uh, you know, ruling, which was against a data vendor. Um, clearly, data vendors are SEC governed. Mm -hmm. And um, also with the latest risk alert that the SEC came out with, um, you know, spe specifically mentioning all data, um, this is obviously a very important um, area to focus on. Um, so luckily, you know, Sequentum has the whole platform and uh, very extensive um, uh, methodology that, that we've worked out and, you know, automated over time. Well, you know, a lot of what we do is web data extraction, and there have been a lot of questions about uh, the legality and, and, and uh, of uh, web, data, web scraping. Um, and also uh, the risks of investing um, based on data that's collected from public websites. Um, and one of the big rulings that came out over the last year is the HiQ LinkedIn decision from the, uh, the Ninth Circuit Court, um, where they basically said, you know, it was, uh, you know, Web scraping is not a violation of the CFAA, the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. It's not hacking. There's no authentication. There's no gate that was passed in going to a public website, um, right? And this is, this is really relevant because this was an open question before that ruling. Um, so basically, you know, what we, that's how we thought the ruling was going to go. Um, so we didn't have to change anything that we we're doing. Um, but it was a really big, um, a really big ruling, and we, we were all waiting for it. Um, so, uh, you know, there's uh, different interpretations. Different groups will fall somewhere different on the, you know, their risk tolerance where where they they fit on the spectrum will be different. But um, but it was a it was it was a great great moment of clarification for our industry. Well, you know, I, would, I just did a panel um, last month with uh, Adam Stork from the SEC, um, and, who issued that, that risk alert. And our focus, um, you know, on the panel and also our approach that we recommend um, and, and, and that he uh, kind of unofficially rubber stamped, um, is it's really about people, process, and technology, right? Um, not only, not only is this web data incredibly valuable, it makes up 40% of all alt data. Um, uh, you know, you really can't ignore it, these public data sources. You need them incorporated into your data-driven decision-making and, and investment process. Um, but you need to do it in the right way so that you don't bring risk on your organization. The way to do it is you need to um, basically define your operating guidelines. You need to make sure that your employment contracts reference those. 
make sure that there is training on record, that your employees are trained on and updated on a regular basis if there's any change. Um, and then you need to have, uh, uh, you know, a clear platform and tools that are automating um, a lot of the governance and, um, and audit logs to be able to attest that you have a process. And anytime there are changes to laws or rulings that you've gone through and you have made those alterations, the appropriate alterations, to show best efforts, right? We're operating in an unregulated space. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these are really, this approach is not something that we independently came up with. This is sort of the best practice approach to mitigating security risks. Um, it's really just that sort of ambiguous, I'm not sure exactly where my risk is going to come from, but I'm going to do the best job possible. Um, so, you know, I mean, this is, compliance is at the core of the Sequentum brand and culture. We're very focused on trying to do the right thing and to make sure that the data that we collect is not just extremely high quality, um, timely, accurate, um, but also compliant.